Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. We're going to go do another gun guide video today, but this time with the uh, submachine gun PP1901. It's a pretty good budget gun, actually. The ammo's cheap, the parts you can buy uh, with low-level traders or cheap off the flea market. And it'll get the job done when you're trying to kill scavs, raiders, um, and even players that aren't wearing face shields. So per the usual, we'll, uh, we'll go into my inventory here and we'll look at every part and piece you can attach to this thing. All right, as you can see here, I'm already geared up for another budget run, but we'll dive into what this firearm is actually capable of and how easy it is to actually make and build. Um, we'll start by filtering by, you see these on the flea market, but you're not gonna save much money buying them like this. With this guy, you might. It just depends on what you, the parts and pieces you need to get. Um, I always just buy it from proper 20,922. Now it takes proper level two to actually be able to buy this directly, uh, but that doesn't take too much to get to. And at level one, there's the ability to barter for it with T-plugs. In fact, sometimes it's actually cheaper to go this way than it is to buy it straight from him. So like right now you get, uh, what do we need, five of them? So you're getting it for 15,000 or less right now this way, which is a little bit cheaper and it gives you the same firearm. So one option, it's only got one gas tube that goes with it. So we'll throw that on there. You've got your rear sight, that you don't need if you're putting sights on it. Um, we'll put on there for now, as well as kind of your standard uh, RP1 charging handle that goes on everything, gives you your uh, your one ergo. Um, you get this from skier level two. And then you have your standard PP19 muzzle brake. Um, it's negative four, but if you're looking for a little extra boost, you can get the one that goes on the Saiga nine and it's negative five. It basically counts for one recoil at the end of the day when it's done. Uh, this thing is available from Jaeger or pretty cheap on the flea market. Uh, I'm not totally sure. Let's go see what level you get it from Jaeger at. So right there. So level two Jaeger, you can buy it for him for 510. Gives you a little bit extra recoil, um, but not much. So we'll throw the standard one on. We'll move this guy out of the way. Next thing up is your dust covers. You can have your standard dust cover. This is what comes on it when you buy it. It doesn't have anything. That's what you're going to want to use if you use any of these attachments. If you're going to be mounting any other kind of sight to the top, you can use the one that has a rail, and then you can directly mount anything to the top of that. It has a five ergonomics, nothing else other than that. We're going to stick with this one. Lastly is your stocks. It comes standard with your PP19 stock just like that. Um, you can put the butt pad on there like most other AKs. Gives you a little bit of a more of a boost. You got five and one or negative five recoil, one ergonomics. And then this by itself is uh, 40 recoil and five. So it's pretty good. It's a pretty, it, there's nothing wrong with running it straight stock like that. Take it apart so I can show you the others. You can also go with the PT lock, um, which gives you the ability to put the PT3 and the PT1 on. Um, both very, very effective uh both very, very effective stocks. So you got 45 recoil on that guy, 44 on that guy. Your big difference is primarily your cost. They are uh, actually pretty expensive, um, which kind of eliminates the purpose of running a budget gun. And then lastly, you have this interesting ability to attach most uh, American or AR style uh, stocks, if you will. So you put the AKTS on here, which it'll still fold, which is handy. And then you can put any number of the standard U.S. style, American, NATO, whatever you want to call it, stocks, things that go on gas tubes to do all sorts of interesting stuff with this firearm. But that's not what we're going to do. We'll stick with the standard. Oh, what do we got on here? Why won't that go? Well, there we go. Okay, we got our stock PP. So... Um, you've got all the different pistol grips that can actually go onto the, a the uh, PP-19, just like an AK. I didn't buy all of them, but I got a pretty good assortment here for your different uh, ergonomics. I've got them ordered from highest to lowest. You know, you can go all the way up to 13 ergo with the RK-3, but things like this one here, whoops, you know, you can buy it for 1500 from proper. Um, let's just go look and see what he's got. So at level one, you can buy your basic standard pistol grips. There's six. At level two, you can start getting some better ones. Um, there's a seven and so on and so forth. But you can usually get them off the flea market for a pretty decent price. So we'll go link to search and we'll look at what we can get for pistol grips here. So pistol grips, um, 
And we'll just put the standard PP19, the one that comes with it on there, just so you guys can see what it looks, how we get there. Now, one thing that I the PP19 comes with is basically your standard um, ability to attach dovetail sights to it. So all of the dovetail sights here will go onto this, as long as you don't have this. So if you have this other dust cover on, these will, uh, you'll have issue with some of them. Like that, that won't go on. In fact, my, none of them might go on when you have that on there, including the mounts. It doesn't look like any of those will go on. So you want to keep, if you're going to be doing anything like that, you want to keep your standard dust cover. And then you can just put any kind of sight you want to go on from there with it. Um, all the way. So you've got my favorite, which is the AK, EKP8, which has also has the ability to put a um, this uh, Cobra cover thingy on it. Um, it gives it one ergo, goes right on the front there like that. Uh, you got your OKP7, your USP1, but I don't know anybody who uses this thing. This site is just awful to use. It blocks your field of view. It doesn't have a good zoom. It just it's not a good site. All your PSO ranges, and then your IP59 mount that lets you put the uh, the other kind of scopes on there will go as well, um, like all your other AK platforms. And then you've got your B13V, your Cobra, and your O43 uh, dovetail mounts that go on and allow you to attach any number of sites all the way up to uh, technically uh, you can put Valdes and things on uh, this if you so desired. One thing the Cobra gives you is it has a, a side mount on here for lasers. So you can use this and then you don't have to worry about a handguard that has a laser attachment. But that's about the only difference between the lot of them. A little bit different with ergonomics, but not a huge effect. Now we'll get on to handguards. Now just like the AK, there is a bunch of handguards you can put on this. Uh, we'll go look at what the uh, flea market's telling us right now. Um, as you can see, the whole kit and caboodle here, just about everything you can imagine from the uh, the wooden grips to the, the pretty red uh, uh, TDIs, uh, the MOE handguards, the B10s, all of that stuff. One thing that is weird, though, is the Zukov U show up. You cannot put these on the PP19. It'll link search. It'll attach to the, um, it'll attach to the gas tube. But it will not go on to the firearm itself. So, right there, PP1901 and Zuka View at the same time are uninstallable. So, just wanted to put that in there. Keep that in mind that you can't put those on the PP19. All the rest you can, though. So, we're going to kind of go with just the standard cheap AK100 series. Uh, this is the budget build. Um, you buy it from proper at, I believe, level 2. Might even be level 1. Yeah, so you can get it from them right here at level one for fourteen hundred and two. So you take that, you strap that on. Now you're uh, actually a complete firearm. Now for grip, this thing has a grip and a laser slot. For lasers, I uh, I'll just use the cheap laser on this. So we'll put the the uh, little blue laser you get from Skier on there, which you can get that for ten k if you don't have it unlocked. And then I also go with a cheap grip. So I just use the Ash 12 because it's the absolute cheapest grip you can buy. Um, gives you your six ergo, and it only costs a very small amount of money, uh, 2,500. I think it's the cheapest grip you can buy, or one of. But you do have the option with the rest of these handguards. So the AKML gives you a really good ergo. Um, your B10 is somewhere in the middle, gives you ergo and recoil, and then everything like that, you get your highest ergo out of the, and recoil out of these MOE handguards. But with the MOEs, remember, you need to use rails or uh, stuff that'll attach to Magpul directly. So like you got the 4.1, then you can go to the Swift, um, but then you need a rail on the side to be able to attach uh, lasers if you want to. And then the B10 has the bottom and side, um, but a little bit better stats. And then you can use this wooden hand grip if you're memeing like I was for a while, um, just because it looks funny, but it gives you technically a foregrip. <sighs> Got two. <sighs> Woo! <sighs> Morning wood. <sighs> so we'll put that on there and get a little bit closer to my budget build. So the next thing down the line here is suppressors. Now I don't run these on my budget builds, um, but they're available and I wanted to talk with a bit about you. So your basic cheapest one is your Rotor 43. 
Um, it does have a recoil help, but it's got a huge hit to ergonomics and actually hits accuracy. Next up is your Vityaz, which if I said it wrong, I apologize to all the Russians out there. This thing is halfway decent, three recoil, um, six ergo. You got your SRD9, which is uh, the SIG suppressor, same kind of deal, um, but it's one accuracy, five recoil, six ergo, and then your Osprey is your actual best one. It does negative seven recoil, which is actually more than your muzzle brakes. You know, even your best muzzle brakes, only five. It has a nine hit ergo and an increased accuracy. And then lastly, you can technically attach the Hybrid 46 to this if you wanted to. It's not the best by any sense of the imagination. So why you would attach it, I have no idea. It makes no sense for anybody to ever attach this to a, a, a PP-19. You're, you're nuts if you do. Uh, and you have to have the DT mount to do so. Um, so you, just to show you guys, if you're unaware, we'll take off the muzzle brake. You put the DT mount on, and then the hybrid goes on. And now you have a, a suppressor that's more expensive than the entire rest of the gun combined. So let's take this nonsense off of here real quick and move on to the magazines. So you have four magazines available to the PP-19. We'll move this down here like this. You have your junky 10 rounder. Um, again, not much reason to use this because there's not a huge cost difference between most of these, uh, but it's there if you wanted to use it for some reason. Next up is the, oops. So next up is the 20 round. This thing has no hit to ergo and it does a 15% reduced modification to load unload your standard mag is your 30 rounder. It's got a two hit to ergo, but it works just fine. It's really cheap. And then finally you have your 30 rounder. So no hit to ergo and then it unloads and reloads a little bit faster. I almost always run this. Um, I'm running these mags right now just cause I want to use them up, but this thing is pretty cheap. You know, it's pretty expensive if you buy it off the flea market, but let's go see when you can buy it from skier. So level three skier allows you to buy these. So once you get these unlocked, if you're still running budget runs, um, I suggest this is pretty much all you run because they only cost 3700 So now we'll stick this guy in there and you have a complete firearm. Uh, technically, I think to get the sight is where he at. So I don't have the sight on there for my uh, my preset. Um, doesn't really matter that much. But lastly, we'll talk about some ammo here. So I have these ordered from lowest penetration to highest penetration. So first up, you have your rip ammo. This is your highest damage. It's uh, right at 102 damage, but only two pen. So this is for legs and arms only. In fact, arms, it won't work if people have armor on. This will do zero damage to anybody wearing anything. Next up is your P PSO GZH. You'll find this on scavs and stuff a lot in these guns. It's an okay flesh gun. It has almost no penetration. You're at 10, so you'll get through level one armor, but that's it. Luger CCI is your other really high flesh damage round. It's 70 damage and 10 penetration, so it's a little bit better in ripping that aspect that it'll actually get through level one armor. But other than that, it's not gonna do much. This is a leg meta kind of round at all. Then you got your green tracer round. This has 58 damage and 14 pen, um, but it's got a tracer on it, but its velocity is very, very low. So you can see here, you got 365 meters a second versus 457 on your PST GZH. The bullet drop on this is insane. I saw that fucking shot, dude. Holy shit. I'm hitting him in the hands. Oh, there we go. Headshot. <laughs> uh, if you ever go try to shoot this thing more than 100 yards, or for whatever silly reason you try to shoot for two or 300 yards, you'll see that bullet drop on this is is measured in, in tens of feet, not 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 in inches. Then onto the PST GZH. This is my go-to round all the time. It's really cheap. It's effective. It does 54 flush damage and has 20 pens, so it'll actually get through level two armor. And if you uh, mag dump into a face shield, it'll actually get through the face shield at uh, level three, believe it or not. Uh, it just takes a little extra effort and time. And then lastly, you have your most expensive round for now, because they've got some new rounds coming out here shortly. You have your AP 6.3. This guy's expensive though. I believe it's, uh, we'll see how much this is. We're right at 276. So you're $2, $2.8 per round for this thing, or on the flea market, I think about 800 to 900. But it's 52 damage and has uh, 30 pen. So it will get through level three armor, which means it'll get through most face shields uh, and anybody not wearing higher tier armor. But it is extraordinarily expensive. So next thing we'll do here is we'll go into presets. We'll look at some of the ones I've built uh, to show you guys how much it costs to build different PPs and play with different PPs. So the first one we'll go after is our budget PP because this is the PP I play with the most. 
uh, I figured I'd show you guys how it works. Let me get the stats up here where you can see them. So 42 vertical recoil and uh, 58 ergonomics, it works just fine. Uh, again, it's not all that much different from a stock one, but it has a couple of bonuses that uh, make it a little bit more fun to play with. And cost-wise, it's pretty cheap to build. So we'll go in here, we'll make sure we turn off the weapon parts. We'll filter a couple of things out because uh, they'll come with uh, the gun when we buy it from proper. So that, 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 um, that, and that. I think that's everything, right? Okay, so your 29,581 to build this as is uh, with plus the 20,000 or 21, whatever it is from proper. So for 50,000, we'll say you can get a complete uh, budget PP, um, add another 15,000 for mags and ammo, and you've got a gun that's going to get you through a raid pretty well. So the next uh, PP we'll look at is a sweaty PP. This one is about the best I could get with the stats uh, as you could possibly get out of a PP. The recoil is extraordinarily low, 35. The thing's an absolute laser. But like I said, this is extraordinarily expensive to, to make. Um, running this PP is going to cost you a lot of money. So we'll go look and see what it takes to build that. Uh, everything's there. Take a sec to delete all the parts that we don't need to buy. Oh, look at that. It gave us a full one. Oopsies. We don't actually need those because that's that. Um, so there you go. You're 198, 572 to make a sweaty PP plus the gun. So 120. And then, uh, next up, we'll look at one of my favorite meme guns to run and that's the, the morning wood. So I would always run this thing in the morning on the maps when the sun's coming up funny as hell to use and actually relatively effective. Still pretty low recoil stats. Ergo's not great, but it's really cheap to make. Um, I think the expensive thing is actually the wood handle. Because uh, I don't think a vendor sells it. I could be wrong. Let's get some of this stuff that we don't need to buy off of here. Uh, so, your 25 960 to build a suppressed wooden PP. And this is pretty cheap right now. Um, but these can get kind of expensive. So, be careful if you're buying those. Because they're player only. Now, we'll just go to the list to look. Because I don't remember what they were all named. Um... Oh yeah, we have the longest PP. So this is one I was sniping. I've done quite a few sniping days with using green tracer ammo. It's extraordinarily difficult. Uh, the stats aren't that great and the round sucks. So it's only good for killing hatchlings, really. But if you can get that shot off, it feels really, really good. And we'll look at what this costs just for shits and giggles. Okay, there we go. So 282000 to build this. Uh, and that's mostly because of the Silencer Co. You know, $100,000 suppressor. Uh, some of the other ones we won't go into a great deal of uh, information about. But just to show you how uh, clever some of the guys were that were helping me put these together. We've got the Limp PP because it's basically useless. You uh, have a 10 round mag, no sight. And the ergo and recoil is obnoxious. Uh, it's almost impossible to kill anything with it. And I proved that in factory. <sighs> the only downside is, is that unless somebody has this preset saved... They didn't see why I was running a gun like this. All they saw was I taking apart PP. Probably thought I was a scab with the way I was dressed. But think of how much funnier it would have been if they'd opened up my inventory and seen a limp PP in it. Um, we got the fastest PP, which is uh, simply the highest ergo. It pulls up the fastest. You can technically get it over 90 if you take the uh, PK06 and the laser off of it. But I wanted to go this way just to, to show. It's 88 ergo. You've got the thick PP, you know, basically the most expensive parts you could put on the thing. It's not that much different from the sweaty other than the fact that you're running a Reaper, an extra flashlight, um, and a more expensive handguard. Stats are okay, not the best, uh, but if you've got the uh, the balls to uh, go into uh, a raid with a thermal on a PP, you've got a bigger one than me. We've got the tiny PP, which is basically just the smallest you could make it. Its stats are not very good because the recoil's awful and the ergo isn't even that high. But it is indeed the smallest that you can make. And lastly, well, we got the 2P1S. Uh, it's halfway decent. Its stats are pretty good. 
It's just really expensive to make. It's kind of cool to look at, though, with uh, the, the two red and the one brown on it. So I wanted to go through the range here a little bit with you guys and compare peepees. Just to show you that it doesn't matter what you do to them. Pretty much every PP shoots the same. Even if you spend a bunch of money and gear this thing up, like the uh, like the like my sweaty PP that I have, the effect is there uh, because the recoil is almost next to nothing with it. But the difference between that and the stock one, or even my budget one, is so minuscule. Um, you're not going to be fighting at medium ranges with this. Hopefully not. Sometimes you have to, but it's meant for close range. And at close range, the difference between 34 recoil or 35 recoil and 45 recoil isn't going to matter on a face because that's what you have to do with this. You have to shoot people in the head. So if you want to go through and kit one out a long ways, just to have fun with it, by all means do it. But the budget will work fine. And in fact, the stock one that you buy from proper straight away works too. So if you're really hard up for money, you can get into a raid for less than 30,000 ammo mags um, and firearm included so one of the beautiful things about peepees is that you're going to get them back in insurance almost every time so whether you die because you're playing with your peepee -pee, or if you kill somebody and want to flop your peepee -pee on the ground if somebody comes across them they don't want to touch your peepee -pee. so you'll almost always get them back from insurance well, that wraps it up, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Had a lot of fun making it. Um, tried to make it as entertaining as I could, even with some of the juvenile humor. Had a bunch of help from the guys coming up with some of the clever names for the guns. Uh, if you uh, got anything out of it or enjoyed it, please hit the like button. Um, it helps out the channel a bunch. Comment down below with anything else. Maybe you guys can think of some other ones to come up with. By all means, feel free to share them. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button to see future content. We'll do some more of these along with my economy videos and things like that. So thanks for watching. Hope you guys are having fun in Tarkov. We'll see you out there.